Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now, before we go into today's broadcast, are you ready to do this one thing that we do daily on this broadcast? And that's to call for your daily bread. Are you ready? Let's join our faith together right now. And listen, God is going to answer. You know why? Because he loves you. Are you ready? Say, Father, I declare right now and I receive my daily bread. It's coming from you and I receive all of it in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. You remember Jesus said one time, he says, Cherub, it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Think about it. God is interested in giving you the kingdom. It is his good pleasure. It's not a stress to him. He's not struggling to do it. It is his good pleasure. Praise God. Now I've been sharing a lot with us lately, especially on this subject, on the glory of Jesus. Now, when we're done yesterday, the Lord spoke to me and said, Hey, the reason I'm causing you to teach these things now it's because the time for you to manifest your glory has come. You see, Jesus said something. And that's our team scripture. The glory you have given me, I have given to them. And, and the Bible says in John chapter 2 from verse 11, it says this beginning of miracles did Jesus and manifested forth his glory. Understand, I told you this yesterday, that the man God created was a living soul. He was not a spirit being. See, so when did man become a spirit? Man became a spirit when the Holy Ghost came. Please allow this sink in your heart. See, sometimes when we share the truth, that I'm, I'm carrying out my ministry, which is a ministry of a teacher. And when we teach, we're not trying to convince. See, that's the thing. A teacher is not trying to convince you. A teacher is explaining the truth of God's heart, of God's word to you. Now, if your heart is open to understand, good for you. If your heart is not yet open to understand, one day, you will get to understand. And when you do, you will remember, oh, I've heard this thing before. <laughs> it is good. Now, as a teacher, even Paul said, he said, wait for your ministry. So we wait for the Lord to give us utterance. We wait for the Lord to tell us what to teach. So I'm, I'm teaching you these things now because this is the time apportioned or allotted for these things to be brought forth. So you that is hearing these things, don't lose the opportunity of taking advantage of what you're hearing and become a doer of his word. So man became a spirit when the Holy Ghost came into him. So the spirit of man is the same as the spirit of God. It is one spirit. There are no different spirits. We don't have a different spirit from the Holy Spirit. Take away the Holy Spirit from us. We are simply what we are, living soul. Now, because the Holy Spirit is in us and he came into us when we got born again, you can't be born again without the Holy Spirit. If the Holy Spirit is not in you, sorry, you are not born again. I shared that with you yesterday. Jesus was speaking and he said, except a man be born of water and of the spirit. Why? Because that which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. So one is born of the flesh and one is born of the spirit. Who's born of the flesh? The first creation. The first Adam was born of the flesh. And the second Adam is the Lord from heaven. He's born of the spirit. So we are of the second Adam, born of the spirit of God. Jesus told Nicodemus, you must be born again. The first birth was the flesh. The second birth is the spirit baptism. 
John said it. For as many as receive him, to them he gave the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born. So they were born. He was not talking about their, the birth from their mother's womb. No. He said, which were born not of blood, nor of the spirit of the, nor of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Now, when he says but of God, it means but of the spirit of God. So now we have received the Holy Ghost and the Holy Ghost have become one. We carry the identity of the Holy Spirit. Now, someday we'll be able to clear, clearly explain this thing to your reasoning. Yes, because some people still argue, no, hey, hey, hey. You will come to discover very soon, I pray, that this is it. So now then, the glory of Jesus have become our glory. So we can customize it the same way when we speak today. We say, oh, my spirit. Now, when we say my spirit, you are actually referring to the Holy Spirit. So now, hey, listen, the, the Holy Spirit is in you. And he's become one with your person. Now, what's his job? What's he doing in you? He is, Allah, he is training your mind, teaching your mind to begin to reason alike with him. Now, this is the born again experience. So Paul says, be not become, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by one thing, the renewal of your mind. Brothers and sisters, you see the mistake a lot of us make. We, are, we think we are in this thing to see what God is going to do for us. No, we are not in this thing to see what God is going to do for us. We are in this thing to become one with him. So quit this mentality and quit this habit of thinking, I've been serving God for 20 years. He has not done this for me. I've been serving God. What are you talking about? What are you expecting God to do for you? You know, sometimes believers go, you know, times of discouragement comes. And then they go, hey, but how long am I going to pray? How long am I going to do this? How long am I going to, how long am I going to, I've been doing this for so long. When is God going to answer me? When is God, hey, what are you talking about? Which answer is God going to give to you again? Apart from what he has given to you. Now, I know we, we, we grow in expectations and things like that, but listen to me. What determines the progress you make in life is not God. Is how well you attune yourself with him and walk in agreement with what the Holy Spirit is teaching you today. So, and every day, Jesus said it, my father is always walking, so I'm always walking. Now, that father he was talking about is the Holy Spirit. Brothers and sisters, the same father is in you now. Has he stopped walking in you? What work is he doing? The work of renewing your mind. How is he renewing your mind? No, he doesn't take you into a factory or a theater and starts tuning things in your mind. Like, oh, 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 I'm feeling something. No, brothers and sisters, that's not what's going on. How does he renew your mind? He renews your mind by speaking to you. Now, what is he saying to you? He's speaking truth to you. You may be sick in your body right now and, and, and while you're, you're praying and then you're hearing the voice of the Lord say to you, you shouldn't be lying down there because you are not sick. And this is your response. Eh, if you heal me, I'll stand up. But he's saying to you, you shouldn't be lying down there because you are not sick. No, the doctor said, the test result shows, this can said, this, this. Now you are quoting what everybody has said. But what has God said? What has the Holy Spirit said?
Now, this is where it gets difficult for believers many times. Difficulty in believing what God is saying. And guess what we now try to do? We try to look for who to lay the blame on. We try to look for who, you know, who should be able to say, ah, okay, um, this person prayed for me. Even this person prayed for me. It did not work. You know, sometimes people are just looking for who to blame. But the truth is, it is their unbelief that is working. Brothers and sisters, John was right when he says, hey, See, Jesus trained us not to depend on any man. So when John said, you have an unction from the Holy One and you know all things. He says, the anointing which you have received from him teaches you all things. And you have no need that any man should teach you. But as the anointing that teaches you all things is true, even so you should abide in him. What's John saying to you? You can't blame anybody because now if you are not listening to the anointing that's the holy spirit now if you are not listening to the things the holy spirit is teaching you if you are not walking with him now the holy spirit takes you on a journey and as you follow him you grow as you follow him your mind is renewed he takes actions in your life he gives you instructions in your life because now the renewal of your mind will cause you to do works It had never been heard of before that people are right for wedding and someone turned water into wine and people drank in that wedding until they are full. It has never been heard of before. When I hear is Jesus, his mother comes to him and says to him, the, the wine is finished. What do we do? And someone said, but why was his mother so concerned about the lack of wine at the wedding? Because it was their family wedding. Yes, it was their family wedding. And one of Jesus' sisters was getting married. And so that's the wedding they were in. So I can just imagine when they were getting ready for the wedding they were telling jesus oh we need more wine and jesus was not interested to see that and then now the wine is finished so the mother first son the mother came to you're the one that made us not to buy wine the wine is finished so ah woman what does that have to do with me leave me alone my time is not yet come said okay no problem went to the servant said go meet him whatever he tells you to do do he's bearing the responsibility of this wine Okay, ma. And they went to Jesus. And, and this is Jesus, full of the Holy Ghost. Same way you have the Holy Ghost in you. Wine has finished. So Jesus encountered difficulties the same way you encountered difficulties. Wine has finish and then he say wine is about to finish say wine has finished money has finished food has finished whatever you can think about that constitutes difficulty in your life it has happened and jesus didn't send those servants back to his mother he says go and meet out what, what does she want me to do no he suddenly switched. Now he was having this conversation with his mother. He says, look, please leave me alone. My time is it's not yet come. The mother didn't argue with him. Say, your time is not yet come. We shall know when your time comes. Servants, go meet him. Whatever he tells you to do, do. You know, sometimes we need to we need to bring ourselves to that same place. And here is Jesus. So what do I do now? And then the Holy Ghost said, "Tell them to fill the water pots with water." Mm. Now He does the same thing in you. But now the problem with your with us is, instead of obeying Him, you begin to question Him. Fill the, water, fill the water pots with water. 
build the water pots. We need wine, not water. They have enough water. They can fetch water from the well. We need wine, wine, wine. You begin to argue. But Jesus, he filled the water pots with water. Now fetch that water and go give to the governor. Ah, huh? I can't embarrass myself here. You see, that's how we respond to him. How can I carry water from, do you know this? This is the water they used to wash the feet of people who, as guests that come for the wedding. Okay. But the mother said, whatever he says to you, do. It's the same thing. It doesn't matter the situation you find yourself today. Do you know the Holy Spirit is speaking? Oh, see, he's a speaking spirit. He's never quiet. He's speaking. Question is, do you believe him enough to act on everything he tells you, irrespective of what your mind is accustomed to? His job is to renew your mind. Is his job is to bring you from that comfort zone of your thinking and your thoughts. His job is to turn your mentality around and begin to align with his own ideas and thoughts. That's the work of the Holy Spirit in training your mind. But guess what? You are too conformed to this world that you are not willing to embrace anything that he is saying to you now. It took a renewal of the mind to accept that water pots, filling the water pot and fetching it to give to the governor will equals wine. Not just wine, best wine. What if it didn't happen? But it happened. And but in my own case, hey, you see, sometimes we 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 read what Jesus did. I, I want you to follow me. We read what Jesus, they fill the water pot with water and go and give to the governor. And they will now want to do the same thing. Say, oh, fill that water pot and take it and drink and see. And the person drink, ah, it's water. You see, what you miss out is, is this. You just looked at the demonstration. You didn't look at the spirit behind that demonstration. It was the Holy Spirit that commanded him what to do. Now, your own case. What is the Holy Spirit commanding you to do? It's not for you to copy what another person has done and go do the same thing. What we copy in all these things, because Jesus said it, we will do greater works. How are we going to do greater works? This is how we'll do greater works. By depending on the Holy Spirit, the same way he depended on the Holy Spirit. This is the glory that we share. This is the oneness that we, 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 he talked about. That we will be one with him, brothers and sisters. If you are not walking by the Spirit of God, the same way Jesus walked by the Spirit of God, then don't talk about oneness. We can be one with him. If we are still looking at our lives and measuring it by Oh, this, this, uh, listen to me. The Holy Spirit is in you. Focus on him. Focus on what he's doing in your life. Focus on what he's saying to you. And you will know he's speaking to you when he begins to alter the reasoning that you carried before. When he begins to alter the way you thought, the way you reason, the way you, your outlook to life. When he begins to alter those things. And let me tell you the truth. All you need to have in life is him. Because from where you are right now, he can take you to the place where you never imagined or dreamt about. And the Lord said to tell you the time to manifest your glory has come. And how are you going to manifest your glory? Listen to the Holy Spirit. Let him tell you what to do. Believe him and Act on everything he says to you, even if it doesn't make sense. My time is up. Praise God. Father, we honor you right now. Thank you. 
we release our faith to manifest glory right now in the name of the lord jesus we subject our minds to your truth thank you lord <laughs> in jesus mighty name amen god bless you i'll see you tomorrow bye like share and subscribe